program today, Nigeria begins airlifting of at least 80,000 pilgrims for this year's Hajj. National Association of Nigeria Travel Agencies threatens to relocate to neighboring country due to policy inconsistency. Plus, heavy losses may force Kenya Airways to cut 600 jobs. Hello and welcome to your number one aviation program, Flight 101. I'm Lillian Ezemark. Flight time is 30 minutes. Fasten your seatbelt. Relax. Enjoy the trip. The Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria, FAN, says it provided security and safety oversight to all airports, including state-owned facilities, participating in the airlift of Muslim pilgrims in the next five weeks in the 17 airports across the country. Spokesman of the agency, Yakubu Dati, says safety and security infrastructure have been given priority attention in all airports to ensure seamless passenger airlift during the exercise. This year's Muslim Pilgrims Airlift began with the inaugural flight to Saudi Arabia from the Sultan Abu Bakr III Airport, Sakwata, but in Lagos, 448 of them are undergoing security checks ahead of the exercise that would ensure the fulfillment of their religious obligation at the Hajj Terminal, Moritala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos. This airline operator says two flights would be operated daily with three aircraft, Boeing 747-400, and 767-300, totaling 150 flights throughout the period of the exercise. This is another memorable day for uh, the life of the company and for the life of Nigerian pilgrims who are fulfilling their five their pillars of Islam religious obligation. When we are closing the Hajj for 2015, we commenced 2016, leaving the rest for Allah to fix it, and you have been fixing it. Commissioner Southwest, National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, said so much has been put in place to make this year's pilgrimage different. This year there is an a e-track system in which all the pilgrims will wear that wherever you are will be able to monitor you, will be able to say that this is a Nigerian. You know, you can have some Nigerian who will come from other countries. We can't uh, 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 account for those ones, but we have to account for Nigerians who travel from Nigeria. And with the e-track system which we have done, we believe, inshallah, this one will be able to track any Nigerian wherever you are. So that one makes it different. And secondly, the accommodation in Medina, this year it is very unique because all Nigerians will stay very close to Haram, where they, where they call Markazia. Markazia is like municipality. He dispelled the generally held view that the federal government subsidized the cost of the pilgrimage. The government is not subsidizing Hajj at all. What happened was that Nigerians will always request for a uh, uh, concession. The government, at the time, Nigeria Hajj Commission write to the federal government, the government, the, the, the current actually that day was 197 naira 80 kobo. The federal government said no, no concession, that it is what is obtainable that day, and that's what they approved. Don't forget, we have finished all the arrangement of Hajj about two, three months ago, because it is not now. So we have finished our own arrangement before the open market one. He has also asked Nigerians who are going for the Muslim pilgrimage to be good ambassadors of the country and shun acts that would bring this honor to their faith and country. About 80,000 pilgrims would be airlifted this year. Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, NAMA, has disrupted Arik Airlines' flight operations in Abuja for refusing to pay for services it provided, but the carrier has begun negotiations with the agency. Arik's top officials visited the headquarters of NAMA to meet with the Debt Recovery Committee, where the airline indicated interests to have its debts restructured. To prevent total disruption of its operations, Arik Hair has begun reconciliation of his books with Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, NAMA. A source at NAMA said the action was taken to make the airline clear its debts. It was not clear the amount Arik owes NAMA, but reports said the carrier was ready to negotiate and pay what it owes NAMA after reconciliation. The agency's effort seems to be paying off as the committee recovered 329 million naira in two months and just 
as it intensified efforts to recover more than half of the debt before the end of the year. NAMA's liabilities are said to include a team billion naira pension, cost of manning the 24 airports across the nation and growing overheads. There are indications that the local airlines also owe the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority NCAA, and the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria FAN, 10 billion naira and 20 billion naira respectively, bringing the debt profile of the airlines to all the agencies to more than 38 billion naira. Other airlines, including cargo and charter operators that have ceased operations, are also heavily indebted to the agencies. President, National Association of Nigeria Travel Agencies, Nanta Bankole Bernard, says that the organization is beginning to record losses with the departure of foreign airlines, adding that there is fear that more airlines might quit flying the Nigerian routes. Bernard made this known in Lagos. Bennett says the new forex policy and economic crunch are having enormous negative effects on travel agencies. The travel agencies sold about $1.4 billion worth of air tickets in 2015. Amid the low patronage, Bennett said some of the members were beginning to consider relocating to Ghana, where the policies are consistent. We had 50 airlines on the platform. As of today, it has reduced to 36. For the public, all they, all they know is that United Airlines has left and Iberia has left. Nobody cares to know the number of other airlines that we couldn't sell on that platform, that we sell to them through other platforms using an air. An air has about a hundred and something airlines that we can use, we can we, we can issue their tickets through that platform. Here we are today, that is not available anymore. Policy inconsistency and naira devaluation are said to account for investors shying away from investing in Nigeria, especially the unsavory experience foreign airlines are going through in the country. For every one million dollar, forget the airline, every airline. For every one million dollar, and I told you we are approaching eight hundred million. For every one million dollar, we lost eighteen million naira. Do the maths. How is the development affecting the domestic airlines? The foreign airlines will do to you. If it's good, they stay. If it's not good, they quit. But your attic has no place to go. This is home. No fewer than fourteen airlines have withdrawn their services from the country due to low patronage on account of the economic recession. The airlines include Iberia, United Airlines and Air Gambia, which were among the 50 that operated the Nigerian route some months ago. Last year, Central Bank of Nigeria introduced a fiscal policy restricting access to foreign exchange and funds transfer out of the country. International Air Transport Association, IATA, estimates that no less than $600 million belonging to foreign airlines is stock in Nigeria. The association appealed to government to ensure the immediate release of such funds. Aviation sources estimate that Delta and United Airlines have up to $180 million trapped in the Nigerian economy, while Air France KLM is estimated to have more than $150 million. British Airways had about $100 million as at March 2016, while Iberia, which had already withdrawn its services, has $5 million of its funds trapped. Nine international stories. Heavy losses may force Kenya Airways to cut 600 jobs. Plus, Indonesia opens new aviation terminal. Kenya Airways, Pride of Africa, tries to stop a big fall as Chief Executive Mbuvin Gunze has announced 600 job cuts out of his 4,000 strong workforce. Ngunze said the measure would get the business at the right size in order to grow it responsibly. Kenya Airways has published the airline's worst ever corporate results. The scale of the loss revealed the effects of several disastrous decisions that the national carrier is struggling to reverse. The airline has suffered a loss of 26.22 billion shilling, 
is approximately $250 million, driven by higher borrowing costs and unfavorable exchange rates. Reports say a misguided expansion strategy launched in 2011 is the root of the problematic state of the firm, a move that called for the purchase of new Boeing planes with the objective of doubling the size of its network. But since the Ebola virus and terror attacks on the continent have reduced Africa's tourist numbers, while rivers such as state-owned Ethiopian Airlines and Qatar Airways have boosted their offerings. The firm has also lost out on rock-bottom fuel prices. Like many airlines, it hedges its fuel costs by entering into fixed price contracts. We are focused on three things. The first one is how do we return or how do we close a gap on profitability? Uh, very critical because we are coming from a deep loss. The second one is how do we make our business model relevant and revisiting our business model and to make sure that we are first serving the right markets, we are winning in the markets where we have competitive, competitive advantage and also that we are working with the right partners and we are deepening our relationships with partners. And the third thing is how do we create a sustainable financial structure, first short term and then long term. Kenya Airways' two biggest backers, Air France KLM and the Kenyan government, the firm's share price has dropped from 140 shillings in 2006 to 3.85 shillings. Despite the gloom, analysts see cause for optimism. Revenue was up 5% and operating losses shrank, thanks to a series of shock treatments imposed on the airline by management last year. A number of structural changes are beginning to show fruit. Kenya Airways has sold or rented out planes that were sitting idle, reducing its fleet size by a third, and has rid itself of an expensive permanent landing slot at London's Heathrow Airport, opting to rent one instead. Kenya Airways was founded in 1977 following the demise of East African Airways and considered a cash cow just a decade ago. The main airport serving the Indonesian capital, Jakarta, has opened a new terminal that will allow overcrowded aviation hub to handle millions more passengers a year. In Indonesia, the number of air passengers is soaring as the growing middle class is increasingly choosing to fly, but aging infrastructure is struggling to keep up. The $380 million terminal at Sokano Hatta International Airport will be able to handle about 25 million passengers a year once fully operational by March next year. The other three terminals at the country's busiest airport are currently handling about 60 million passengers a year, way over their capacity. Speaking at the terminal opening, Chief Executive Arif Wibowo hailed it as a great milestone which will help provide better service for customers. This airport is aiming for uh, having the capacity up to 25 million passengers. Of course, now Garda has been uh, having uh, around uh, 20 uh, million passengers a year for the domestic. The terminal will eventually be connected to central Jakarta, about 30 kilometers away, by a rail link. Currently, there is no rail line between the airport and the city center, leaving passengers facing traffic jams in a bid to get into Jakarta at busy times.